Hello and welcome to the first update of uh, 2020. Uh, so in between uh, getting drunk, stuffing my face and uh, doing my taxis, taxes, I've managed to um, do quite a bit of work on make tile. So I've introduced uh, three new tile types, um, done some work on the curved walls, uh, generally neatened up quite a lot of the code and uh, changed the way a few things work. So uh, okay, let's get started. Um, so to start with, um, I'm just going to go back to where I finished uh, last time, which was on the curved wall. Um, and if we uh, create a curved wall, um, you can see uh, by default when it's an open lock style wall, uh, it creates the uh, sockets on the uh, inside. So if I um, now if I change the degrees of arc uh, to a negative number, uh, so minus 90, click on make tile. Uh, and generate it, then you can see that now the um, the curve is going in the other direction um, and the sockets are on the outside. So that's just a, a little feature to make this a bit more useful. Um, okay, um, so um, the three new tile types which I've created are um, the corner wall, um, which as you can see is a corner wall. Um, this one is quite customizable, um, so you can change the uh, length of each of these two legs separately. So if we make that three, keep that one as uh, two, uh, and click on make tile, you can see that we've got the, the difference, um, the two legs are different lengths. Um, we can also change the base angle um, of this, so that's now a much more acute angle. Um, and just like with the uh, curved wall, if I change that to a negative number and click on uh, make tile, um, it will put the sockets on the outside rather than on the inside, which is where they were before. Um, okay, so the second type is a triangular floor. Um, and with this, again, you can control the length of the two legs and you can control the base angle. Um, although this needs to be a po positive number, otherwise things will break. Um, so yeah, so that gives you a triangular floor um, and you have to be slightly careful with these. If you go too extreme with the angles, things will start to look a bit weird. It should, with the open lock um, tiles, work up to about a 45 degree angle. Um, but sort of, if I go below that, yeah, still working, but yeah, it's starting to starting to get holes punched from one side to another, and it's it's just not going to work very well. But it should work for sort of most relatively sort of sane um, tiles that you want. Uh, the last one we've got is we have a curved floor tile. Um, now with this one, um, you can only choose the. Uh, the, the length of each of these sides has to be the same for now. Um, but this arc can cover, again, sort of whatever you want it to, but this can be either a positive or a negative curve. So if I change that to a negative curve, click on make tile, then yeah, you can see that it's a uh, um, curves in. So this could be a sort of surrounding a tower or something like that. Um, you won't get any clips on the inside of this uh, because uh, frankly, I haven't implemented it yet and it was making my brain hurt when I tried to do it. So I'll probably get around to that at some point in the future. Um, but for now, it's only the uh, the curve tiles with the uh, positive curve um, that have the open lock clips on the, on the curved side on the base. Um, right, so there's a few other things which I want to show you. Um, so first of all, uh, if we go and create a uh, straight wall, it's an ordinary straight wall. Um, when you click on them now, you'll see that if it's an open lock tile, uh, it has uh, this little side sockets will pop up. And um, these allow you just to turn the, the sockets on and off um, without having to regenerate the tile. Okay. Um, which is quite nice. Uh, now, if I uh, go to this other new menu, which is vertex groups, and I uh, show the materials by clicking on create lighting setup, um, then you can now control um, which side the material um, 
appears on uh, without having to regenerate the tile. So if I select front on the vertex groups, click on remove material, it will remove the material from that side. If I then click on make 3D, see it's created the material on the size where it is applied, but not on the size where it isn't. Um, so if we return to preview and then click on assign material and it's back on there. Um, you can also um, change the material. Uh, previously, if you change the material here, it would automatically update it all. But since you can now assign different materials to different bits, that no longer happens. So I've changed that to stone wall. Um, still got my front selected. If I click on front, it will assign the stone wall texture to the front, whereas the other sides will be uh, remain as the bricks. Now this isn't fully implemented yet. If you click on make 3D now, it's only gonna make this stone bit 3D. Um, it's not gonna work with the bricks. Um, so that's sort of the next feature that's, that's I'm gonna be um, implementing. Okay, so that was slightly broken. Um, yeah, alpha. Definitely lots of bugs. Um, so if I just uh, make this 3D, um, down here you've got uh, the trim settings menu. Um, this is slightly changed. There's no longer a trim tile menu. Instead, um, you can just turn your trimmers on and off um, by just clicking on them. Um, so that's just a bit of a you know workflow improvement. Um, yeah. Uh, the other thing which has changed is that now if you uh, voxelize a tile or if you export it, uh, you no longer lose the original tile. Um, so it, it remains there. And I'll show you show you how to use this. So if I click on voxelize tile, we have a tile which is voxelized and there's, you know, there's no longer any sort of way of changing clips or anything like that. If I click on this, nothing happens. Um, the side sockets option has disappeared. Uh, I don't have the option to go return to preview or make 3D anymore. Um, what's happened is that here you've got this uh, this outliner, which um, is a bit like sort of Photoshop's layers, um, and it has a, a has collections in it. And Make Tile makes a load of different collections whenever you do anything. Um, and each collection, like this, is actually that is a tile. So Open Lock Straight Wall is the sort of the parent tile of this. When you voxelize something or when you export it, it creates a new collection. Uh, it's called flattened objects, and then it sticks the voxelized um, or exported tile into that collection, and it hides um, the original um, tile. So we can we can see the original tile again by hiding this one. So we just click on the little eye icon here to hide that, and then. What we want to do is we want to click on straight wall empty, which is sort of the, the parent object of uh, all the other objects. And you can see we've got straight wall base, straight wall merged. Okay, and here this means that we've got the, um, the uh, what we have here is we have the merge but not voxelized tile here and we have the base okay so if we get rid of that and we go into our base you'll see that we also have another one which has been hidden which is our core here and this is the original sort of bit of the main tile so with this we can turn our sockets on and off we can you know return to preview change our material all that kind of stuff and then we can voxelize it again obviously that's not a very good workflow at the moment it's all a bit fiddly um, but I'm going to be working on that so that uh, you can easily sort of switch between your your exported or your finalized tile and take it back and you know keep on working on it uh, without having to worry about fiddling about in this menu. Um, but yeah, so that's that's where that is at the moment. Um, okay, so I'm just going to delete all of those. Uh, you'll notice that I'm I'm using this this menu to delete my tiles because they are these collections if i just select something here and press delete it doesn't delete everything um so what i'm doing at the moment is i'm selecting uh 
one of these collections, uh, I'm right clicking on it and I'm clicking on delete hierarchy and that's deleting everything for me. Um, again, I'll sort of make this into a bit of a more elegant solution. Um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of why I keep on doing that. Um, so otherwise you end up with lots and lots of sort of bits of old tiles left knocking around. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you one last feature, which is an object converter. So I'm just going to create a cube. I did that by uh, pressing um, Shift and A and going Mesh Cube. Uh, you can also add one by going up here to Add Mesh and Cube. Um, and I'm going to select that object. object. I'm going to go onto the uh, Object Converter menu and I'm going to click on Convert Object. It doesn't look like anything's happened, um, but what has happened is we've got a, uh, uh, a new vertex group has been added. And also, if we go here, you can see that it's duplicated this cube. Um, so I can't actually show you that. Um, but there's actually now two cubes, one which has got is for the previews and one of which is for the displacement. Um, now if I um, click on assign material in the vertex groups, it will um, assign the currently selected material to the entire cube. And then if we click on make 3D, it'll make that 3D, just like uh, any other um, make tile object. Um, obviously, though, you're probably going to want to uh, choose where to apply a material. So let's say you've got, a, I don't know, um, you've got sort of a simple um, door model or something and you want to apply uh, wood to the sort of, you know, wooden bit and stone to the stony bit. Uh, then you want to be able to select those two bits and, uh, and apply the materials to the appropriate places. OK, and the way that you'll be able to do that is, um, first of all, we're just going to click on Remove Material. Uh, we're going to select our object and we're going to press Tab and that will take us into edit mode. I'm going to go up here um, and we're going to click on face select and uh, this will allow us when we left click on any face um, it will select it. If we uh, shift click on a face um, it will add it to the set to selection and if we um, control click on a face it will remove it from that selection. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to vertex groups so I'm going to click on the plus icon that's going to create a new vertex group okay and we're going to call this uh, just call it front so I'm just double clicking on that and just renaming it um, and then I'm going to click on assign and what that's going to do is going to, going to take these four vertices and the face which those vertices makes up and it's going to assign them to that vertex group then going to uh, tab out of edit mode and we're going to click on assign material and this time it's just going to assign the material to the front. OK, if we click Make 3D, it'll just make that 3D bit, um, make that front bit 3D. OK, now obviously things are still rough around the edges. As you can see, things crashed, didn't work properly, etc, etc. This is very much still an alpha. Um, but what I'm going to be working on um, over the next sort of two or three weeks is basically improving the material system so you can uh, have different materials assigned to uh, different areas of your tiles and um, for them then to be made 3D correctly and also I'm going to be uh, working on the actual materials themselves so that the brick and the stone material um, are better and uh, work with all the different uh, tile types which involves uh, messing about with different ways of texture mapping um, and also adding a couple more materials uh, so a wooden sort of plank material um, and also a, a concrete or plaster material. And uh, there's also a couple more tile types that need making a T-shape sort of connector um, and a cross-shape connector. Once all that's done, um, then make tile should actually start becoming quite useful for people to use. Okay, so hopefully that all made sense, um, wasn't too rambling. Um, but yeah, I shall uh, release another video in a week or so and show you um, how things have gone. Uh, you can download the latest version uh, from GitHub, the links are in the description. Um, but as I say, still fairly broken and buggy, so it's more for, you know, having a look at what will be than actually using it in a particularly useful way at the moment.
Okay, I think that's everything. Bye for now.